Since I create content on various networking topics over the last year or so, I've been working on building out a small test lab network that's separate from my main network. And it's been very convenient for me because I'm able to try out uh, different configurations that would be difficult to do on my main network without breaking it. And since my family would not appreciate that, I actually try my best to keep it stable and solid, kind of like a production network where everything's running well, hopefully the best that I can. But I decided that I needed a network switch with some higher speed interfaces. And I just need a basic unmanaged switch for now for that network, just so that I can actually test throughput between devices more easily. Cause some of the stuff I've been doing on some of our reviews, I've just been kind of directly connecting systems together, which works to test between two things. But if I want to do more advanced type of configuration or testing, it's, it'd be a lot easier. I've seen several reviews on Serve the Home on various unmanaged network switches with higher speed interfaces. A lot of them are approximately around a hundred US dollars. Some of them might be just a smidge below that, maybe $89 or whatever. I saw the other day on Amazon that there actually have, there's a switch that has four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interfaces and two 10 gig SFP plus interfaces for $69 and it was actually a 10% off. So that actually makes it closer to $60, like $63 or something like that. So that's actually a pretty good deal that I decided I'm just going to try it even though it's just a generic brand that you never really heard of this cheap low end um, gear for the purposes of what I need. I don't even with throughput testing, I imagine even the cheap switches that serve the home review, a lot of times you can get maximum throughput on them. So I purchased this one lace, which as you can see has four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interfaces and then two SFP plus interfaces. So let's unbox this beast and see what we got here. Okay. Let me open this. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow, look at this. See? So as you can see, there's our 2.5 gigabit inter Ethernet interfaces and there's our SFP Plus interfaces. They actually have some plugs in there. They're actually kind of like little rubber plugs there. They protect those ports. As you can see, this is pretty basic. Just four ports here, two ports there. And uh, uh, it's actually a fanless model. So there's no fan in it. So it just has these vents. And there's actually a little grounding screw here and a power adapter on the back. And I think um, it's a metal case. So, I mean, it actually has a little bit of weight to it. Another thing I forgot to mention is it has some wall mounts here on the back. Um, that's one thing they advertise it has wall mounts. <laughs> so, so you can just, you can screw this to the wall. Some people like to mount their devices on the wall. I actually have to put mine in a rack. One of the things I wanted to mention about this switch is that it doesn't come with any rubber feet. So I actually bought some rubber feet on Amazon. As you can see, I, I put some kind of big ones on the bottom. So when, you, when it sits here on the rack, you can see like if I push on it, like if I push on it, it, it really holds it in, in place. I'm actually kind of pushing on a decent amount. Uh, it'll slide a little bit if you're really pushing on it. But like the nice thing is if I pull in this cable, this slightly in these cables, it, this box actually isn't going to move around everywhere because whenever it was no rubber feet on it and it's just metal and metal it just slides all over the place so that's one suggestion that if you get a switch like this it doesn't have rubber feet I, I recommend buying some feet for performance testing i like using iper3 to get a general idea if i'm going to be able to get maximum throughput through the network interfaces for an unmanaged switch i'm not actually super worried about getting maximum performance and sometimes it actually just depends on the device that you're actually plugging into the switch for example on my proxmox server i actually have a, a dual 10 gigabit SFP plus net, uh, network interface card. And I actually, for some reason with that card, I don't know if it's because it's the way it's sharing bandwidth on that system or the, or the PCIe slot that I'm using, but I don't actually get full uh, 10 gigabit throughput on it. I can get like six or seven gigabits for some reason. So, but when I try it on a different system, I can get full 10 gigabit throughput. So I know this switch is definitely capable of getting uh, the full 2.5 gigabit throughput and as well as the 10 uh, gigabit throughput. As you can see, I've, I ran a couple of iPerf tests. I'm not going to do it in real time because I already moved my switch back into my rack because I had to move it to test this for, especially for the 10 gigabit interfaces. And since I needed to do some stuff on my lab network, I didn't want to unplug it again and re do this and re-record it. But as you can see with the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interfaces, I can get 2.35 gigabits, which is pretty much the maximum throughput uh, after the network overhead. So I'm getting a pretty good speed there. And 
I have two different tests I actually ran for the 10 gigabit. So the first set of tests are that when I ran it with MTU is 1500, which is the default for networks. And so when I run it with that, I get 9.3 gigabits per second. But if you switch it to jumbo frames, which is 9,000 MTU, you actually can get an extra almost 500 megabits to go from 9.3 or so to about 9.8 to almost 9.9. .9. So it's actually really a decent amount of bandwidth increase by using jumbo frames on 10 gigabit. I always recommend if you have uh, a 10 gigabit only network that you just switch everything over to jumbo frames, especially if you have a storage backend network, that's when you might want to use this the most because you can get maximum throughput. I hope you found this quick review of the one lay 2.5 G 10 G unmanaged network switch to be useful. I just wanted to review this switch to let you know that even a cheap budget friendly switch will work just fine on a home network if you don't need to have uh, VLANs and you just want some qu yeah, faster interfaces to connect some of your devices so you can transfer data between them faster. It works fine just great in my home lab network and so I, I will be including an affiliate link below if you want to buy it from Amazon or a similar one that's on Amazon as well that may have a discount code if because sometimes they change. So uh, I would definitely appreciate the support. Thank you. Have a great day.